Hey, hey, hi, hello, welcome to the Rodent Recital channel. Uh, let me know what you think about that intro song. I think it's pretty darn good. So, again, we are in my bathroom because it's the quietest place in my house. So I'm sorry about the echo. Also, there was a bird outside my window again, twittering on about nothing. Uh, I'm trying to tell a story about folklore, bird. So today on this episode of Urban Legends, we are going to be talking about the Mexican vengeful ghost La Llorona. I believe I'm saying that correctly, which will be the first and only time I will be saying anything correctly on this channel if it is not in English, because I'm a dirty, dirty monolinguist. So La Llorona, otherwise known as the Weeping Woman, is a vengeful ghost who roams waterfront areas mourning her children who she drowned. I just said children. I mean, I don't want to be rude, but why are you mourning someone if you're the one that killed them? Like, it's a bit hypocritical. Let's get into the tale and enjoy this beautiful speed paint of La Llorona that I did in the background while you listen to the story. In the regular version, there is a legend of a beautiful woman named Maria who marries a rich conquistador um, to whom she bears two children. One day, Maria sees her husband with another woman and in a fit of rage, she drowns her own children in a river and she immediately regrets it. What did your kids do? What did they do? They didn't, they're not the ones that were with the other woman. They're not your husband. Drown him, drown the other woman. Why'd you drown your kids? Consumed by guilt and unable to save her children, she drowns herself as well and is unable to enter the afterlife and is forced to be in purgatory and roam the earth until she finds her children. A fitting punishment, I believe, because that's whack as hell. Like, I don't want to disrespect La Llorona, but your husband was the one trifling, not your children. Just drown your husband. I mean, I don't condone drowning anyone, but the kids didn't do anything, bro. In another version of the story, her children are illegitimate, and she drowns them so that their father cannot take them away to be raised by his new wife. W what does this accomplish? I mean, you still don't get the kids. You, you dr they're dead now you still don't get them. So either the kids get taken away and you don't get to raise them, or you literally kill them. It's not adding up. I mean, she could have just ran away. She could have taken the kids to, I don't know, Sweden, run away with the kids, taking them to Sweden. I hear it's nice in Sweden. Uh, so recurring themes in the variations of La Llorona include a wet white dress, nocturnal wailing, and an association with water, which makes sense since a big part of the story is drowning children, which, you know, that, 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 that has water. That, that makes sense to that. I'm, I'm moving on. So the mother archetype of La Llorona has been tied to patriarchal expectations of women in Mexican culture, which makes me feel bad about all the comments I said about her being hypocritical. Uh, I don't know what it's like in Mexico for women. You know what, just ignore everything I said. Uh, just don't drown your children, okay? I'm not saying that's okay. The trope of La Llorona being considered evil or failed as a mother, having committed infanticide or failing to save them from drowning can be considered a reflection of a culture um, of patriarchal standards against women and the role of motherhood and this really makes me think about the case of Andrea Yates. Uh, this took place in Houston, Texas, where a woman drowned her children. Um, she was going through postpartum psychosis, postpartum depression, and she drowned her children. And she was given the label of a terrible mother and an evil person, when in reality, she really needed help. She was crying out for help and no one offered her help. A lot of responsibility was placed on her in taking care of the children and I feel like there is not enough of a discussion around postpartum depression. The most common lore about La Llorona is about a indigenous woman who murdered her own children which she bore from a wealthy Spaniard after he abandoned her. The villainous qualities of La Llorona including infanticide and the murdering of one's own blood is assumed to be connected to the narrative surrounding Dona Maria, also known as La Malinche or Maltinzin. <laughs> in her original nomenclature. Today, the law of La Llorona is well known in Mexico and the Southwestern United States. So there you have it. There is the story of La Llorona. And I hope you enjoyed episode two of Urban Legends. And I hope you enjoyed the drawing, the speed paint. I hope you liked it. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for another episode of Rodent Recital. <laughs>